Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You know, we toss words and phrases around that we've learned from other people, and sometimes we don't even know what we're talking about. What do you think an autoimmune disease is, Robin? I mean, we sort of kind of know, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is your immune system? How do you fortify your immune system? A lot of our, a lot of the things we say we get from advertisements, right? Yes. Let's learn a little bit about what this thing in our bodies really is that keeps us uh, healthy or supposed to anyway uh the next book we're going to talk about is called an elegant defense the extraordinary new science of the immune system a tale in four lives and this is getting rave reviews it's currently number one in biology on the amazon uh listing it's also uh let's see number two in immunology number two in biology in the kindle store and number three in immune systems in the Kindle store. Uh, Matt Richtel is on the phone. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. He's a reporter for the New York Times, a contributor to National Public Radio's Fresh Air and the PBS NewsHour, and it's an honor to have him on AM Ocala Live. Matt Richtel, good morning, sir. It's an honor. Good morning. Good morning. The honor is mine. I'm, I'm so privileged to be on your show. Thank you. Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, you know, it is one of those things we wonder about. We, we always think that we protect ourselves just naturally, and sometimes it doesn't work. It goes awry, right? Yeah, I mean, the immune system turns out to be an incredibly complicated network system inside of us. And what's so extraordinary is that we really have made huge strides the last couple of decades in understanding it, and that is changing how all of medicine works. So we are at this remarkable inflection point where a lot of medicine is beginning to, to curve around the new definition of the immune system. Do, do the medicines that we've developed in the last few years um, complement the immune system or work instead of the immune system? Oh, that's such a good question. Well, so just for the, for the listeners, broadly, um, it might help if I took a step back and defined the immune system. It's not exactly what I thought of when I started this ambitious book. Um, but And so I'll, I'll seek your permission after to do that. But to answer your question in short, the new medicines we're developing are beginning to complement or even tinker with the immune system, which is an extraordinary notion. We are actually monkeying around with this sophisticated system on the molecular level to preserve health and lengthen life. See, I wondered about that because I wondered sometimes if it wasn't, not to be so corny, but like almost like Star Wars, like the force is with you. It's always been there, but maybe it needs a little help. Yeah, it, it, well, the force is with you. The force is exceedingly powerful, and the force sometimes doesn't work enough and sometimes is overpowering. So you've got this system inside of you that more than anything else, wants to be in balance. I think that we have often thought of the immune system as this thing we want to see blown up and used with, sorry, I don't mean blown up like exploded, I mean, I mean fortified, to borrow your word, or boosted. But actually, that's not really so. Really what the immune system wants to be is put into tremendous balance so that it attacks when necessary, but also withdraws or stays cautious when necessary. Otherwise, you get these autoimmune disorders. It uh, seems you've been uh, researching this for an extremely long time, and you have incorporated your research into individual stories that you have included in your book. Yeah, I, I decided that I owe the reader two things. The best information I can provide, and I, I, 
I just want to emphasize, yes, I've spent years on it. Probably there is not a more authoritative book on how your immune system works. But I also believe my responsibility is not to bore people. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, it, you know, if you put the best information out there and everybody falls asleep with the book in their lap, what good have you done? And so I tell the science while combining it with four very gripping stories. One guy who um, has what is such a perfect immune system that the federal government studies it, two women who have autoimmune disorder, and then there's Jason, and I gotta tell you guys, he is a miraculous tale. Should I give you a little more yeah, about him? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you can't go that far and not give us a little I, more. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you, I'll promise you guys this. If after I'm done with this brief story, you don't say, wow, that's miraculous. You should have written a book about that. We can all hang up and go our own ways. I, I, I will pay this off. All right. Absolutely. So, absolutely. All right. So I grew up with Jason in Colorado. He was growing up Mr. Everything, like, you know, a great ball player, great looking guy, got all the girls. Then when we turned 40, unfortunately, he came down with blood cancer, lymphoma, Hodgkin's. Now, this is one of those cancers that's supposed to be curable through chemo and radiation, but it didn't work on Jason. And about three years ago, Jason wound up with 15 pounds of cancer in his back, doubling every few weeks, and his oncologist in Denver tearfully said, Jason, I love you. It's time to go home and die. Oh. And he went into hospice. That's your setup. You ready for the punchline? Yeah, I can't wait. Jason takes this immunotherapy drug, a Hail Mary, while he's in hospice. Now, an immunotherapy drug is a drug that is intended to spur your immune system to attack cancer. But the, the technology is very new. The medicine was very new. It was a long shot. Jason's girlfriend wakes him up two weeks later and says, get out of bed. Your tumor has disappeared. Wow. Wow. Does, like Lazarus okay. from the Bible, okay. he rises from the grave. So does that tell us that cancer is a, because of a failure of our immune system? Well, it, that's one way to put it that's quite eloquent. The only reason I'd pause is it's not so much that your immune system is failing, but rather that cancer can play a trick on the immune system and cause it to pause or to ignore the tumor as if it were our normal tissue. So for, for, I would just want to say this book is for anyone who either has cancer, knows someone with it, has an autoimmune disorder, knows someone with it, because the immune system is the common glue that connects all these all these medical issues and the immune system is the is the network through which medicine is now trying to attack these diseases all right so everybody wants to know what was the medicine he took and why wasn't it given sooner yeah great question the medicine the fancy name for it is called nivulumab and the reason it wasn't given sooner well there are two one is just to underscore how new this is, we're just inventing this stuff. So new is it that this year the Nobel Prize went to the guy who understood the underlying science, a scientist named Jim Allison out of Texas and Berkeley. He, he's worked at various places. So number one, it's new. The tests were just being done. But there's a number two that's probably more important outlined in the book, and I just would encourage everyone to understand about these medicines. Even though they have miraculous properties, they are not risk-free. When you spur the immune system to go forward and destroy the tumor, you risk creating a too powerful auto, a too powerful immune system that can attack your own organs. So it must be used cautiously under the right circumstances, 
eyes wide open by patient and doctor. So somebody with an autoimmune disease would not be helped by this or they would? Great question. Someone with an autoimmune disease would use something that is very similar but has the opposite effect. Same technology, but in this case of autoimmune disorder, would put the brakes on the immune system rather than spurring the immune system. It's a similar idea. Okay. Yeah, right. Makes sense? It's, it's, it makes sense. It's hard for me to know how doctors know what, what combination of chemicals or whatever they use. That, that part is beyond me, but I do understand what, your, what the end result must be. The other, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, there was an article in the Jerusalem Post that made headlines in all the newspapers that said that a doctor in Israel said that their, his clinic will be able to find a cure for cancer, all cancer, within a year. And uh, just to say one more thing about that, he said that each individual with cancer would need a different prescription, but they would be able to figure it out with a biopsy. Is that any, anywhere on your radar? I mean, can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a... It, the timetable seems fast to me based on what I know, but the optimism is, is understandable. And the reason is that the technologies I have just been describing, this, this idea of spurring on your immune system or causing your immune system to pause, those are in such early stages that effectively we have the foundation on which to build much more refined, even personal treatments. To say that it will happen within a year sounds like a good way to get you to call his clinic and sign up. Yeah, right. That's what I'm yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean, I mean no insult to him, I just mean this is very serious stuff that very, very brilliant scientists are trying to figure out right now, and I just wouldn't want to overpromise people. I do think there's tremendous room for hope, uh, like in particular for cancers like melanoma, which have been so devastating, um, lung cancer, uh, brain cancer. President Jimmy Carter was preserved thanks to this, and I think now he's the oldest li ever living president, I heard. That's what they say, yeah, yeah. So, and that owes to this very thing. So, again, for readers, it's all in the book to understand how this works and ask the right questions. And do you also think that because the length of life now is a lot longer than before, that sometimes people take it for granted and they don't do regular maintenance on their bodies like walk and things, and, they, and then all of a sudden their bones and arteries begin to deteriorate? One word, sister, amen. <laughs> we, we, know, we know that the way to preserve your immune system and keep it in balance, I keep using that word, is through the basic habits and discipline that we were always told. Rest, keep the stress low, exercise, get your exercise, eat well. But I want to say something really important about this. These are not just words. They're not just ideas. They are backed by extremely powerful science. And again here, I mix the stories to keep the book interesting with an explanation of that very science. Learn why that is important, and I think it will help you to keep up the discipline to do the basic habits that preserve your health and longevity. We speak to a lot of authors, and uh, the advice to authors is to begin your book with uh, a, a sentence that will make the reader want to read more. I want to read two sentences from the first, the first two sentences of Chapter 3. Ready? And then, yep. and then you take it from there. Robert T. Hoff became an immune system marvel on Halloween night of 1977. He was dressed as a mummy. <laughs> Tell us the <laughs> Tell us the rest of that story. Wow, I'm intrigued. Will you, will you read that to me before I go to bed? <laughs> I want you to tell me. What is that? What happened there? Okay, so, so this is, uh, I mentioned that there are these 
four characters in the book, and Bob Hoff is extraordinary. He, on, on Halloween night 1977, he got HIV, the parasite, the, the virus that causes AIDS, but since 1977, he has never gotten AIDS and not had a symptom. Now, it's hard to put that in any context, but I will try. He walked right through the middle of the Black Plague unscathed. So remarkable is his immune system's response to this otherwise deadly death sentence. I, I, I realize that's redundant. But HIV at the time was a death sentence. And yet here's a guy who the federal government discovers is impervious, does not get sick. Now, Robert Hoff goes to the to this very extraordinary building called Building 10 at the National Institutes of Health where they study his immune system and ask, what is it about this guy? What can we learn from this guy? And now it turns out a few others like him who have a marvelous system able to parry HIV. That is amazing. So when we study other people, that's one thing. Uh, the, the book also talks about studying animals. Yeah, this is a tried and true um, aspect of science. And for many, many years, um, it, was, it was mice, mice everywhere, mice, 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 because they're frankly easy to do tests on, they are, um, there are many of them, um, you know, and we learned a lot. But now we're beginning, because we understand the mechanisms better, we're not so much experimenting on humans, but we're able to put the learning into humans. I do want to say one of my favorite chapters in this book has to do with experiments on rabbit and fever. And it was done again at the National Institutes of Health where an, uh, an amazing researcher and doctor figured out what causes fever inside our body and how it works and what it is. And he did it using lots of rabbits. He said, oh my gosh, I was covered in rabbit goop for years. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it, required, it required using a rectal thermometer to figure out the temperature. Oh, wow. Now, we, we've always heard that the rise, in, the rise in temperature that we call fever was our body fighting off whatever was inside that needed to be killed. Is that still true? You know, it, it's, a, it's the question I had, and it does not appear to be true, at least as I understood it. It's not that you're burning out the, 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 the bug. It actually appears, and this is so important, it's so interesting that we've learned this stuff, because it helps us understand um, what, how to treat ourselves how to behave, but it looks like fever is an environment where certain immune cells work better. That's different than, say, frying the bug. And it also appears that fever may be a side effect or byproduct of the immune system working. Why is that important? Well, it tells you that it's okay if you have too high of a fever, to take some things that reduce the pain and fatigue and frustration of fever, because your body will still go fight the infection. T talk a little bit about uh, uh, psychosomatic things that might happen to us. And what, was there a study with the uh, cadets, 1,400 cadets? Yeah, so, so I mentioned earlier the importance of sleep keeping stress low, exercise, they're all connected, but they're all connected through a particular mechanism in the body, and it relates to the question you asked. It has to do with what happens when we get too much adrenaline going, and do you, are you guys surely know the term fight or flight? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Familiar. So 
it's really interesting what happens when your fight or flight gets going. When your fight or flight gets going, it it actually weakens your immune system. Now, why the heck would this be? Hey, really? Well, if you go back a number of years, let's say 10,000 years, and I don't know, you know, you picture, picture yourselves only hairier. So, uh, <laughs> Neanderthal, you guys, and you're running across the savanna from a lion. Well, in that moment, your body is firing off these fight or flight chemicals and the resources in your body, the energy in your body is being shifted to survive this terrible acute threat, but it's shifting resources away from your day-to-day -day immune function because it's much more important to survive the lion than worry about the head cold. Okay, that makes a lot of oh sense, gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? But here's the thing. In today's world, when those chemicals fire, the body may not make a distinction between the fact that what you're worried about is, you know, did I remember to pick up milk for my wife <laughs> and I'm being chased by a lion. Yeah, right. And so keeping some perspective around what the real threat is and using tools, whether it is meditation, prayer, exercise, Getting your sleep because sleep turns off that adrenaline network will actually keep your immune system fortified. Extremely important. Again, it's in an elegant defense, all the science. I, I think it wasn't that long ago, correct me if I'm wrong, where we finally f figured out that the immune system actually does have a relationship with cancer. Um, it, it seemed like once upon a time we didn't think the two were connected. It was two different things. and But now it seems like we understand that better. Not, not only connected, but deeply, deeply connected. And, and so connected that many cancers it appears, look like what makes them effective is that they send a message to the immune system, don't worry about me, I'm normal tissue. So cancer is not just a cell that, that is a, a, a mutated version of you. It's one that does a remarkable job of duping your immune system. And that's what we're trying to figure out how to undo. Can we undo the magic trick that cancer does to your immune system? That's the dance we're trying to intervene uh, in. Matt, you have given us an amazing interview. Thank yeah, you so much for taking time to spend with us. Uh, I have a copy of the book. If I have a listener who wants it, call 622-9622. We'll pick up the phone. One random caller will get it, and uh, the rest of us have to go buy it, including myself. I did find it available on Amazon, and I know you wanted to promote a local bookstore. Um, what's, what's I love your local bookstores. I also know the area because we visit, and there's Barnes & Noble down there, which has been very gracious to the book. Hey, guys, please... If you know someone who wants to understand their bodies, if you want to understand your bodies, I am a very diligent journalist. It's in this book. All right, outstanding. Let me, uh, oh gosh, look how many people are calling. Let I me, know, it's huge. Let me give the number, let me give one away. Uh, good morning, you've got the book. Who's this? Hi, this is Karen, and I want this book. You got, you got it. It'll be waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So one quick last question. Will the book give me hope if I have cancer? Yeah, the book's going to give you hope. This period of time is going to give you hope. This is a book about hope. Thank you, Matt. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump says with the Mueller Russia report now complete, absolving his campaign of collusion on election interference, Democrats have to decide if they'll continue with what the president calls ridiculous BS. Or whether they will apologize to the American people. California Democrat Ro Khanna tells Fox collusion or not. Why not look for some common ground in this country to say American elections shouldn't be interfered with? Some